This BCSN Sports Flash is brought to you by Groganstown Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, where nobody treats you better. Hi, Tom Cooley, coach for Buckeye Cable System and BCSN. It's a real honor to be here with a baseball legend, Mr. Denny McLean. Denny, first of all, on behalf of the Toledo community in Grogantown and uh, Denny Amarine, thank you so much for being here today. It's our pleasure. We, uh, we look forward to coming down here all the time. We have a great time in Toledo. We've known a lot of good friends in this town for a long, long time. And Toledo, as they say, has always been very good to me. So yeah, it's, uh, it we, we've got a lot of fun down here. Denny, you know, looking at the things you did in baseball, I mean, 31 wins, uh, 68, the next year you came back with 24, but 30 wins, it's, you know, the people talk about records are made to be broken and all those things, but in the modern era of baseball, that's never going to happen again, is it? No, not the way the game is structured today. It, it's set up totally different. Every ball game is set up for three or four pitchers at a minimum. Uh, you know, you get into a battle, you've got five or six pitchers sometimes. Sometimes now they bring infielders in to finish a game, which is really which is really an embarrassment for the game and for the organization. I thought that was despicable. Once, once okay, twice, right. that's ridiculous. Uh, if you can't carry enough pitchers on the club, go spend some more money because there's plenty of guys who can at least throw right. if, if you're doing a mop-up job. I thought that was horrible. But, uh, you know, the game, the way it's structured today, it's not structured to allow a guy to win. Uh, any dramatic in any dramatic fashion uh, you know the, the perfect example is Scherzer after 179 games he finally completes a game in professional baseball right. I mean what has gone wrong here um, you know I, I mean we look back on some of our careers and you know Lola's first time in the major leagues and I I mean the first time we stepped on the mound we pitched a complete game and we were expected to, and why these kids aren't expected to, I don't know. You know, a major league pitch, pitcher is the only professional athlete today that does less and has played more. Think about it, hockey, football, basketball, right. no matter what other sport it is, they practice a lot more, they practice their skills, hone their skills, and baseball is the only one, a pitcher, that doesn't. I, I mean, there's such a conflict there with the game, it's incredible. And I don't know how you straighten it out. The only suggestion I've ever made, and nobody wants to pay attention, you raise the mound back to where it belongs, the 16 inches. The game was played that way for 100 years before, and why these uh, divine interventions came down in 1969, nobody understands. Yeah, they wanted to score touchdowns, and we understood that. But everything goes through cycles. Every, everything it runs in a cycle. And we were in one of those cycles in the 60s. Uh, and, and of course, we only had eight teams in each, each league. So the talent was so much more deep. Once they expanded, we saw what happened. They reduced the amount, and uh, you know, pitching really has gone to hell. I mean, it really is over the over this period of time. We have so many Double A and Triple A pitchers in the major leagues today, and that's why the Cabreras hit 340. That's the reason the fielders drive in 110 runs every year. I mean, because the pitching is so bad. I admired so much your pitching style and what you did. You did everything in baseball dramatic. I think when you, your uh, introduction into the minors, if I recall. Uh, did you pitch a no-hitter in your minors? I think when you first started out, your first uh, pro uh, big league baseball game, you hit a home run. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, you've done everything. But I, I love the way you challenged hitters, and you brought the heat, and you, you came after people. Does it bother you today that pitchers, you know, they stay on the outside, they don't want to get in close on anybody, they don't want to move anybody off the plate? I don't understand it. Well, not to defend them, uh, although to some degree I will. The bottom line is the... You can't throw hard inside anymore to a guy, and if you let one get away, either on purpose or otherwise, and I don't suspect very many will let, let him get away on purpose anymore, you know, you're liable to get fined or thrown out of a ball game. That's wrong. A, a, a hitter cannot own both parts of the plate. You can let him own the outside part of the plate, or you can let him own the inside part of the plate, depending upon the kind of stuff you have that day. And when you give him both sides, like a Cabrera, and as quick and as, and as talented as that guy is, um, listen, he's going to hurt you because you're, you can't knock him on his ass, you can't, hurt, you can't scare him, you can't intimidate Right. Them, and you can't do it to any hitter today. I'm surprised we don't have more 350 hitters. Uh, but that also goes to the to the point of that I told you about that the talent is so much less. These guys can't get knocked down. Very few pitchers throw the ball where they really want to anymore. And when they get a guy 0-2, they don't challenge him anymore. They don't go inside hard anymore. They throw him little change-ups, which is the opposite way that every good pitcher who's ever had success in the game will tell you. You get a guy 0-2, it's called the sucker is in the hole. Go get him. You don't throw him a curveball. You don't throw him a slider. You, unless it's your best pitch, right. you don't throw him a change-up. You never give a guy a chance when you got him 0-2, 1-2. And, and that's where the game has gone backwards. Look at Verlander the other night. I was going to ask you, what do you, is he... What 
what, in your mind, you watch him, is it his mechanics? Is there something wrong with his arm? He threw 96 the other day. I, I'm being a little bit of facetious, but what I think he's got is a case of, um, what's her name? <laughs> what's her name? I can't think. Kate, uh, I, think I, he's got, I think he's got upton villitis. Oh. And I think he's in love. I think he's, I you know, it. I get where you're and, and see, here's, so here's, here's, here's the thing. He's already got $250 million in the bank, no matter what happens. Got it. Uh, incentive. Where the hell is the incentive other than being embarrassed uh, when you go out there and give up seven runs? So I, I think uh, even the night when he, um, it was her birthday apparently the yes. other night, and I'm not being critical. No, Don't I, misunderstand I know exactly me. What you're but the thing about it is maybe the focus and the attention it is, isn't as intense as it once was right. before he got to 250 40, 50 million and uh, you know and falling in love and we know all know what falling in love right. can do you can lose sight of the of the catcher and right. uh, lo and behold maybe he's as I said he's got the Upton Bill itis <laughs> and maybe we all would have who yeah. knows you right. know right Mr. McLean, on behalf of Buckeye Cable and BCSN, it has been a real honor to talk thank to you. a baseball legend, and thank you for coming to Toledo. Thank you. It's our fun. All right. Thanks, fun. Mr. Thank McLean. You. Thank you very much. Tom Cole, the coach for BCSN.